In the last two videos, we looked at the biquadratic bank of bandpass filter resonances, the BIC bank. These commonly use a noise input and create a related set of filter resonances. Perhaps you want to think of them as harmonic peaks that become distinct tones of various timbres based on the bank's parameter settings. While we can set the BIC bank's bass frequency, overall frequency spread, filter bank bandwidth or resonance control, bandpass bandwidth spread, and center control, all these settings for the BIC bank are relative to the entire bank of filters in one way or another. You can't individually control the parameters of any specific filter other than setting the bass frequency, normally with X to track the fingerboard. A related filter bank, the BIC mode, allows much greater control of individual bandpass filter outputs. Instead of using the term resonance, the term mode is used in this case. The BIC mode uses the same underlying filter bank construction of either 8 or 48 bandpass filters. And like the BIC bank, you can set the base frequency for the initial mode, the frequency spread of the filter bank, or spread of the modes if you like, the mode bandwidth, and bandwidth spread of the modes. Like the BIC bank, these settings control all the filters. However, the BIC mode also allows you to set the amplitude of each of the filter modes using a graph. Finally, it lets you specify two sets of offsets on those individual modes, each of which you can control with the scale factor, and you can set those two sets of Egan matrix controlled scale factors as either amplitude offsets or percentage of frequency. Now, if you don't quite understand all that, don't worry. With the help of our trusty spectral analyzer, let's see if we can break down exactly what's going on with a BIC mode. So here I've set up a BIC mode. I have a BIC bank along with it so I can do some comparison if I like. Now with the BIC mode, you can see I've sent in just a little bit of noise on this Z graph, maxing out at 0 0.001. I'm setting its frequency to track the fingerboard on X. I have a little formula that I can control the frequency spread. One is for the base harmonic spacing, just like in the Big Bank. I've set the bandwidth very low so I can see my peaks pop out. And let's just give that a shot, and it should look very much like what the Big Bank did before we start playing with the modes. There, we still have eight filters, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, because I've set it in the eight filter mode setting. Those filters are on the harmonic spacing of one to N, 100, 200, 300, 400, 5, 6, 7, and 800. So it's just like the Big Bank in those terms. Now I can go in and increase the spacing on those filters. Can you see? The bass frequency doesn't change, but the filter spacing does. So very much like the Big Bank. The only difference is the Big Bank allows you to set 1 to N spacing and a quadratic spacing that we didn't go into last time. This just sets the filter spacing to be N squared, which starts out at a much greater spacing and then goes on from there. Now let's take a look at what gives the BIC mode its power. We can set this just like the BIC bank to a bank size of 8 filters or 48 filters. We'll keep it on 8 here. And now we can go in and look at the graph that will control the amplitudes of each of those modes or each of those filter outputs. We can also set scaled offsets that will apply to those amplitudes that I can control dynamically through formulas in the Egan matrix. But let's first take a look at what this mode amplitude is doing for us. If I go back in and I play something, here you can see the amplitudes of all the modes are very high because everything is set to the maximum 0 dB output. I can set now the attenuation on each of these amplitudes down to minus 96 dB, which will effectively turn it off. So let's go and take my profile and let's just make it a little curve going down so that I can really see my filters decreasing in amplitude. And now I should see a graph that makes these go more in a curve downwards. And it does. I can further attenuate that so that some of them really go almost off. A much more steep set of declines, you can see there. The higher harmonics are really attenuated. 
my lower ones are really coming out. Now remember, this is all based on filtering noise right now, and the mode amplitudes are really best used in conjunction with waveforms that have a complex harmonic content. We'll see that later. Let's go in and do something a little different. Let's make the harmonics go in an opposite pattern from low to high. Now we should see the opposite pattern emerging. Yeah, and you can even hear I've got my high harmonics coming out, and the low ones are attenuated. Of course I can play now with the other settings. I can set the frequency spread like we did before. I can set the bandwidth a little bit higher or lower if I want the peaks to be higher in amplitude or lower. I can set the mode bandwidth spread that will affect the bandwidth of each of those filters. But it's playing with these mode amplitudes that really give the big mode its power. And I can do stuff like, for example, take some of them that are almost out of the equation and have one of the modes that's really coming out. You can see there, I see my bass frequency, but it's really that one, two, three, fourth harmonic that's coming out here. So you can see a lot of different things you can do in terms of shaping the mode into an exact pattern that you want. That only gives you half of the equation, however. That's your static mode amplitude graph. Using these offsets can impose dynamic filter control based on either the range that you're playing, or X or Y, or any combination of them, which we'll see in a lot of the presets. To understand how these mode offsets might help us, let's do a little real-world experiment. I've picked up a recorder here, and let me play a lower note on that and try and stop the graph at the same time. All right, there we go. You can see uh, this is an open pipe. A recorder has openings on both ends. Now an open pipe is going to give me both even and odd harmonics as opposed to a closed pipe that would give me just the odd harmonics. And you can see my bass frequencies are around 400 hertz. So at 800 hertz, there we go, I have my second harmonic, third harmonic, fourth harmonic. I have both even and odd harmonic content coming out of this and it's kind of in a descending linear fashion. Let's see what happens on a higher note. Am I going to get the same kind of a harmonic structure? Not at all. In fact, the second, third, and fourth harmonics are lower in this graph as opposed to what they were on the lower note. So you can see real instruments change their harmonic content over frequency and also over volume. I need a way in the Egan matrix, if I'm doing physical modeling, to have dynamic control on these overtones, basically, so that I can change things if I'm going higher or lower, or if I'm getting louder or softer. And that's exactly what these offsets can do for us. So now let's do a little experiment using these offsets to see how I might be able to dynamically control the harmonic structure of my sound based on applying an offset to these mode amplitudes controlled by formula in the matrix. So what I want to first do is set a basic mode amplitude profile on the filters. Here I have a slightly descending curve on them. And now I want to set some offsets for those. We'll only use the first set of offsets here, though I could use two sets either independently or in conjunction with each other if I wanted to. So what I'll do is I'll just, for right now, I'll just set all of my attenuations on my amplitudes that will be applied when I bring the offsets in. And what I want to do is let me take them off of the odd harmonics. All right, a little hard to actually make them zero out in the matrix. We could use a function that auto zeroes them. So now I have a profile that's just affecting the even modes. Let me actually attenuate them more so we can see it better in our profile. Now I put a formula on the first set of offsets, which are the ones that I'm dealing with here. And you can see the last one I really brought down to nothing. Now also you can see I can go back and forth between my modes going only 8, or I can go right up to 48 of them if I wanted to use a bank size of 48. So now I'll create a formula that basically applies only to X. On the first half of X, I won't really bring in the offsets. I'll zero them out. 
but on the second half I'll increase as X goes up it's going to go from zero to unity and that will bring these offsets in in an increasing fashion so what it's going to do is reduce the amplitude of my even modes as I move from half of the fingerboard up let's see what that looks like so there let's start on the low end of the fingerboard All the harmonics are relatively high values now, high amplitudes. Going down a bit, because I have them shaped in the initial amplitude profile. As I move up, however, let's go a little past halfway. I can see the even ones are starting to get lower. until I get really up there and now I can really see these even modes decreasing. That's what these offsets can do for us and applied the right way we can get a really nice differentiation in sound. Let's try and use two sets of offsets together to do something interesting. We'll keep the first set as we had it decreasing the even modes as you move from the middle up and let's do something kind of in reverse we'll use the second set of offsets that will accentuate the odd harmonics in this profile but they will decrease as you get towards the mid of the fingerboard so what this will do is at the bottom we're going to have an amplitude profile that's going to be odd harmonics in this shape that will be quite a bit above the even harmonics because I'm stressing them. Now remember both of these are applied to the overall shape which is descending a bit to begin with. So at the middle of the fingerboard here all of the modes should be somewhere around the same place and then as we move up the even ones should decrease again as the odd ones kind of stay where they are. Let's see if that's kind of what happens. So we'll set a low tone here and you can see at, at the bottom end of my fingerboard, it was my half unit, now the first harmonic, third, fifth, and seventh are increasing in that amplitude profile that we have here. Even though overall they are decreasing a bit, I've increased them so much in this scaled offset graph that it's going to look like what we see here. And of course the even harmonics are not attenuated so much as that's where they were, but the odd ones were enhanced, so the even modes are going to be much less as we see here. Let's turn it back on and I'll move up. There around the middle you can see both the odd and the even harmonics are pretty much around the same place because I've reduced this odd mode offset profile as I moved up and the even decrement profile hasn't really kicked in yet. Okay, now I'll go from the middle up. And there we can see we have our original odd harmonic profile that's pretty much descending and, and the even modes are quite decreased in amplitude because they're following our first scaled offset graph. That gives you just a quick idea of what you can do dynamically with these modes. And finally, instead of sending noise into the BIC mode, I can set up an oscillator tracking the fingerboard on X, and I'll set it to 0.7. That'll be a waveform that's going to be sawtooth-like that'll contain all my even and odd harmonics. And we'll just send that direct to output so we can look at it for a second. And we'll set it to around 100 hertz. And there we can see we have our fundamental at 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. We see all the even and odd harmonics going way, way up there, as we would expect in a sawtooth-like wave. Let's send this instead of noise into the BIC mode. We'll get rid of our offsets for now or greatly reduce them. What I'll do here is I'll remove the even harmonics and just have the odd ones pop out. Or maybe I can just 
have the even ones a little bit. And what I'll also do is on the formula that's going to direct outputs, I'll put that now sending the oscillator's output into the pick bank, and I'm going to reduce the amount that I'm sending in there because we don't want to send too high a signal into these filter banks. All right, let's turn our graph back on. Okay, and here we have our fundamental at 100 hertz. The second harmonic is really reduced, almost down to nothing. We see our third harmonic, the fourth harmonic, even one is down to nearly nothing, and our fifth and seventh harmonic are in that relationship that we'd expect. What we could do maybe is bring those even ones up a bit, not too much, but we'll have them come down in some kind of a relationship lower than the odd ones are. And let's see what that looks like. I should see now my even harmonics popping out a lot more. And that's exactly what's happening. So next time we'll take a look at how the BIC mode's actually used in some presets and see how we might alter them as we've done in some of the other cases.